Hey there folks, this is section 9.3 and I'd like to go through with you a couple more identities. The first type is the double angle identities and the first one that we're going to look at here is the cosine double angle. Now remember that cosine of an angle plus an angle, we've learned about those cosine sums. So what I'd like to do is rewrite this as cosine of a plus a because a plus a is the same thing as 2a. If I apply what I learned back in the last section in section 9.2 to this, then I know that this is the cosine of a times the cosine of a minus the sine of a times the sine of a. And when I clean that up a bit, I know that cosine a times cosine a is cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a. This is going to be one of my double angle identities, but I actually have multiple double angle identities. So think with me about the fact that cosine squared of an angle, this is something we know. We know that cosine squared is the same thing as one minus the sine squared. So I'd like to take this and I'd like to substitute the identity, the Pythagorean identity that we have for cosine squared. So let's go over here and instead of writing cosine squared, let's write one minus sine squared. And I still have eight minus sine squared. So what's in parentheses there is the same thing as cosine squared and this becomes one minus two sine squared. So I have several different double angle identities. So far I have two identities for cosine double angle. I can also do the exact same thing to replace sine squared. So let's leave the cosine squared alone this time. And we're going to subtract, yes, the sine squared, but what it equals is one minus cosine squared. Make sure you distribute your negatives. So we have cosine squared of a minus one plus cosine squared of a. And combine like terms, we have two cosine squared a minus one. And this is the third double angle identity for cosine. All three of these are valid and usable and we will use all of them. Let's do the same thing for the sine double angle. Sine double angle is the sine of an angle plus itself. A plus A is the same thing as 2A. Using our sine sum identity that we learned back in section 9.2, we know that this will be sine of A times the cosine of A plus the sine of A times the cosine of A. So I have two terms here being added and these two, two terms are identical to each other. So I'm allowed to combine like terms. So this is going to be two of the same term, two sine A cosine A. Then we have tangent double angle. So if we change this to tangent of A plus A, this will be tangent of A plus the tangent of A, all divided by one minus the tangent of A times the tangent of A. If I simplify my fraction up on top. I'm combining like terms. So I have two tangent A. And down on bottom, I'm multiplying two identical terms. So that's tangent squared. So I have two tangent A all divided by one minus the tangent squared of A. Now, if you go down several pages, let's also take a look at the half angle identities, half angle identities. So let's look at the cosine half angle, first of all. This is gonna equal the plus or minus square root of one plus cosine of angle A all over two. The sine half angle identity will be plus or minus the square root of one minus the cosine of A 
all over too, and yes, I did intend to write cosine of A there. The tangent half angle identity is going to be 1 minus the cosine of angle A divided by 1 plus the cosine of angle A. I've also included there two more for you that you are absolutely welcome to use when we're working with tangent half angles.